Today we're going to find out if these fluorescent grow lights can give us better growth than these LED garage lights for growing some microgreens. So stay tuned for the video. All right, y'all. So like I said in the intro, what we're going to be doing today is taking a look at the results of an experiment I started 11 days ago. I wanted to see how LED lights would compare in their growth to fluorescent grow lights. Now these fluorescent grow lights are the first lights that we ever grew with. We used to use these primarily for our cloners, for basils and tomato plants and things like that whenever we had an indoor kind of propagation space. The number one issue with these is that they draw a ton of power. It takes a lot of energy to run these lights and in doing so, they also generate a lot of energy in the form of heat. And that's why we switched over to the LEDs. Now these LEDs are incredibly affordable and they draw tremendously less power. The awesome thing about these LEDs too is that we actually have been using them for about nine months now and they give us some really solid results with growing microgreens. Before we take a close look at this crop and see where this is at right now, let's go ahead and discuss how this experiment began. So 11 days ago, what I did is I took four bootstrap farmer trays and I filled each of them with six cups of burpees organic potting soil each. I then seeded 15 grams of Brussels sprouts per tray. After everything was seeded, I misted them all and then stacked them up for a four day germination period. That was three days with weight on top and then one day of blackout to allow these to stretch just a little bit before going into the light. After they went through their germination period, we then placed them on their designated shelves and we've left them there for six full days now. And today we are on day seven of this grow and it is time to take a look at the results. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at these on the shelf before we pull them off. So you'll notice that the two blue label trays went under the three Barina 20 watt LEDs. And then the two red label trays were above it underneath the two Sunblaster 54 watt fluorescent high output grow lights. Taking a look at the growth on the shelf, everything looks like it's grown beautifully and these guys are definitely ready to be harvested. They're starting to kind of fall over from being just a little bit too tall, so we definitely know that it is time to harvest. Now I will finally get these pulled off the shelf and let's see them all side by side. Okay, these are now pulled off the shelf and all set side by side. If you guys recall, the red label trays are the fluorescent and the blue label trays are the LEDs. Now taking a look at their growth, now that I have them all level, I would say that everything looks like it has grown really beautifully and I'm definitely happy with all of this growth. At first glance, I'm noticing that this second fluorescent tray right here has grown a little long on one side. I feel like it was reaching for that light just a little bit because that was the one closest to the wall. And that's just something that you kind of notice with the uh, ones that don't have uh, the light in the middle and they are placed on the edges of the shelf. Overall though, I think that the rest of the tray is really beautiful and I am definitely happy with the growth on both of these fluorescent trays. I think that we have some really good stem heights and the cotyledon size and growth all looks really nice on both of these fluorescents. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the LEDs. So at first glance, I'm noticing that both of these also look really nice and I am seeing the same kind of stretching over here on the second of the LED trays. So this one right here and then this one right here were both on the edges close to the closest to the uh, wall. And that is why you're seeing that stretching on uh, both of these on this right hand side right here. Again though, the rest of the growth looks really solid. I'm loving the size of the cotyledons and I think overall the growth on both of these looks really uniform and quite happy. And I'm excited to see what kind of results we're gonna get out of all of this. So that's enough for a first glance. I'm gonna get set up to harvest these and I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this first of the LED trays. Doing some first cut looks here. I am really happy with the appearance of the stems on this. I think that the cotyledons look really nice on this also. I think that the growth on this is actually really pretty dang solid for the LEDs. I love the dark coloration of the cotyledons. And overall, I mean, the product looks really healthy and happy. So again, same thing here. I'm really happy with the appearance of this product overall. I think that we have a really nice, beautiful a uh, stem coloration that moves up into a nice green cotyledon coloration. And overall, I do think that this product looks really he healthy and happy. First of the fluorescent groups, this is the one that was closer to that wall and it's leaning a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the growth. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be that section that's a little bit taller, so I can always cut it down if I wanted to. But again, overall, I'm very happy with the appearance of the growth of this. We have some really beautiful stems that move up into a nice, uh, beautiful cotyledon color. 
And overall, I think it is a really nice looking product there. All right, first cut. I am really happy with the coloration on this. I think I'm actually seeing a little bit of purple down it. Yeah, I am seeing some uh, purple down in these stems. So that's a really good sign for these Brussels that we're seeing that purple. That means that it's really healthy. And overall, I'm very happy with that. Nice green cotyledon color too. So really super happy with this group. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and recap the harvest weights. But before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button because it really does help out our channel. If you guys are feeling extra generous, be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you guys get notified whenever new videos come out. Now let's go ahead and recap the harvest weights for all of these trays. For the LED groups, we had one tray that harvested at 192 grams and the second tray harvested at 208 grams. For the fluorescent groups, we had one tray that harvested at 202 grams and the other that harvested at 203 grams. So all these trays were incredibly close despite being very different lights, grow lights compared to shop lights and uh, hugely different light spectrums. And yet we saw very similar harvest weights. Hmm. Uh, there's that, it's all really har similar harvest weights. So one thing we haven't discussed yet is a little bit more details about each one of these lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys these lights up close and let's talk about the specs on each one of them. Starting on our top shelf, those are the Sunblaster T5 grow lights. Now these are fluorescent grow lights that are T5 in their light class and they are full spectrum for their color. There are two of these at $54.80 a piece, which is about $110 for both of these lights on this single shelf. The PAR output on this shelf is about 65 to 95. So th there's a good 30 PAR uh, distance between the lowest PAR and the highest PAR on this shelf, depending on where you position the PAR meter. The actual draw of each one of these lights is 52 watts and 0.64 amps, which means it's about 21 cents per day to run these lights. Now onto our second shelf, which is our Barina T5 LEDs. So this shelf has three of our Barina T5 shop lights that are 6,500K in their temperature. These lights are LED and there are three of them at $6.67 a piece, which makes it about $20 to fill up this whole shelf with all three of these lights. The PAR output on this shelf is 75 to 85. So the PAR on the LED shelf is a lot more consistent being that 75 to 85 compared to the fluorescent, which is 65 to 95. So it doesn't have as high as a PAR as the fluorescent shelf does but it does seem to have a lot more consistent of a par. Each one of these shop lights draws 19.6 watts and 0.16 amps, meaning it costs about 12 cents per day to run all three of these lights. So the cost for the fluorescence to run them was nearly double that of the LEDs. Now let's go ahead and take a close look at the appearance and see if there is something that's worth that extra cost. Now these two trays over here, these are fluorescent trays and these two trays over here are LED trays. Taking a first glance at the appearance from far away, I will say that I'm noticing just a little bit more purple in the fluorescent groups than I am in the T5 LEDs. In fact, it seems to only be this second tray right here from the fluorescent that has a lot of that purpling in it. I wonder if that was the fluorescent tray that was positioned more in the middle of the lights and thus got a lot more consistent light. It very well could have been that. As for the others, everything does look really pretty. I'm very happy with the growth overall on all of these trays. Uh, the stem coloration and the cotyledon development, everything on this looks very healthy and happy. And I'm noticing some nice deep green on all these cotyledons. Let's go ahead and reverse it and just see if we see any differences here between all of these. And I will say that all these do look really quite consistent. I'm very happy with the uh, development, like I said, and the coloration and the size and everything about these cotyledons. So I will say that the appearance is very close on a lot of these. Now there was one group that had a lot more purple. So this group right here is going to be the group that actually won on appearance because it has that little bit of purple in the stem that I really love to see. Okay, now it's time for a taste test. So I'm gonna bring in a guest judge to taste test all of these and make sure that I am unbiased in my flavor choice. Boop. Boop, hello. Hello. I need you to taste test some crops for me. What do you think? I am going to start with number two, right? Yes. Very, very little flavor. Okay, not a whole lot of flavor on that one. Better flavor? A lot more flavor than the one before it. Good to know. It actually tastes quite nice. A lot of flavor again. Okay, so, so one and three. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I feel like that one had um, a decent amount of flavor too. Definitely more than the first one that I tried. So what's your favorite out of all these groups? Ooh, first group or the third group? First or third? Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, so for flavor, she chose the first group, which was the fluorescent, and also the third group, which was the LED. Now, funny enough, these were the two groups, I'm pretty sure that were the closest to the, yeah, these are the groups that were actually stretched a little bit more for light, these two groups right here. And those are the ones that she is saying are her favorite for flavors. So as for a winner on flavor for this experiment, there is no winner. She said that the worst, surprisingly, was the one with the most purple, which is really disappointing because generally, remember there's a lot of purple like that, they're usually packed with flavor. But she's saying this one had a pretty weak flavor compared to the rest. So winner for flavor is a draw because each one of these groups did have one that tasted really good to her. And in fact, both of the, the um, LEDs tasted good whereas only one of the fluorescents tasted good to her or had more flavor. All right, let's go ahead and recap everything for this experiment. The winner and overall harvest weight were the fluorescent trays because the average on those trays were 2.5 grams higher than the LED trays. Just to recap that, the average for the LED trays were 200 grams and the average for the fluorescent trays were 202.5 grams. So very neck and neck there especially considering how much extra energy the lights used for the fluorescent. Now, as for the winner of appearance, I chose the fluorescence because there was one tray with the purple stems on it that looked really, really nice. And I did notice a lot more purple throughout uh, as I was harvesting those two sets of trays compared to the LEDs, which didn't have a whole lot of that purple, but the stem coloration and the codeine development was still very, very strong on the LEDs. But again, I chose the fluorescence for that purple tray. Now, as for the winner of flavor, it was a bit of a draw. Mandy said that she liked one from the fluorescent group and one from the LED group. She actually said that one from the fluorescent group too also had the lowest flavor, which was the one with the purple stems, which just boggles my brain a little bit because generally purple stems equal a lot healthier of produce, which gives us more flavor, but not in this situation. In fact, she said that both of the LEDs tasted really good compared to just one of the uh, fluorescents. So winner and flavor, I guess, would technically go to the LEDs because it had more consistent or more average uh, liking. All right, you guys, I think that's it for this experiment. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms and our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much. Have a great day and keep on believing. <music>